Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Rising food prices have had everybody on edge for a while now, so a lot of folks may be wondering, is it still possible to go to the grocery store with $100 and come out with a substantial amount of food storage? And this morning, I went to the grocery store to find out, and I was a little bit surprised in a good way. That doesn't mean that food's as cheap as it was a year ago necessarily, but if you're somebody that's just getting started out or you're somebody who's been going at it for a while and you want to add to your food storage, there's still quite a bit that you can do. And in addition to showing y'all the food that I picked up today, I'll also be using bags and other items from Wallaby Goods. And I'd like to thank them for sending those to us and for sponsoring this video. And the first thing that I picked up was some rice, specifically four 20 pound bags of it. And the reason for this is that rice is probably the cheapest way to go about storing large quantities of bulk grains. It's also very easy to find. You can find 20 pound bags like this at just regular supermarkets without much problems. And if you have a membership to somewhere like Costco or Sam's, then you can probably find even bigger bags. Another good thing about rice is that it can be stored for around 30 years with Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. Now, if you're using non-gusseted bags, setting them in a magazine holder like this one can make it a little bit easier while you're pouring the rice into those bags. But if you buy a lot of it at once, like what I did, then using an extra large five gallon bucket liner like this one will speed things up quite a bit. I was also able to get all of these bags of rice for under $10 each. Like I was able to get three bags of the store brand. I think they were $9.76 and the Riceland brand was $9.98. And I think prices may have actually gone down over the past couple of months. Like I know I made a food storage video a month or two ago and bag like this was a little over $10 each. So they might have gone down a little bit. But also the thing about prices is they can vary widely depending on where you live. And I mean, prices could go up tomorrow. So just be prepared that if you don't live in eastern Texas, like what I do, if you live especially somewhere in a larger city, you may be paying higher prices. Another good thing about rice is that it's very nutritious. One cooked cup of it has a little bit over 200 calories and I think around 4.3 grams of protein. But it's important to understand that rice does not have everything that your body needs. You're going to have to eat other things with this in order to stay healthy. And one very good thing to eat with rice is going to be beans. Like rice, beans, they're pretty cost effective to store in large quantities like this 20 pound bag. It costs less than $15. And when eaten together, they do form a complete protein, which is important from a dietary perspective. Then beans, they have other types of nutrients and vitamins that your body needs. Things like fiber, potassium, copper, and they can be stored for 20 years or more with Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. And when you're using Mylar bags, of course, you can seal them up using a hair straightener, or you can get a dedicated sealer like this one by Wallaby. They sent me mine a couple of months ago, and so far I really like it. It's a whole lot easier to use with non-gusseted bags than something like a hair straightener is. Now, if you're curious about how much money we've spent so far, we have 80 pounds of rice and 20 pounds of beans for $53.78, which is a pretty good foundation for your food storage. Even though pinto beans are great, it doesn't hurt to add something like these green split peas to your food storage either. And you can do that and still stay pretty close to that $100 mark. For example, you can get an eight pound bag of pinto beans instead of a 20 pound bag, and then kind of fill in the gap with something like these peas. These were around $1.37 each, so to get 20 pounds of legumes like what you had before, you're probably going to be spending a little bit more money, but it's also going to add some variety to your diet. Then also, good thing about peas in particular is that unlike beans, they do form a complete protein, although they are a little bit low in one amino acid called methionine. And like beans, they do have a shelf life of around 20 years when stored in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. Another food prep that I picked up today was iodized salt. Salt, of course, is an essential part of our diet, and getting iodized salt will help give your body the iodine that it needs as well. And aside from being important from a nutritional standpoint, it'll also help give your food a little bit more flavor. I was able to pick up these two cans of iodized salt for around 54 cents each. Salt by itself has an indefinite shelf life, so it'll 
will store forever, but the iodine and iodized salt may start to lose its effectiveness after around five years or so. If that happens, that doesn't mean that you cannot use the salt. The salt may just turn a little bit yellow, but it's still safe to eat. Now, one thing about storing salt in Mylar bags is that you definitely want to avoid using oxygen absorbers. If you use those with salt, the salt's gonna turn hard and very difficult to use. If you're buying cans of salt like what I did, then the medium six by nine inch bags like from Wallaby's multi-size gusseted bag bundle, they're a very good choice. Another thing that has an indefinite shelf life is sugar. It's good to store because it's gonna add calories to your food and it's also gonna help it taste a whole lot better. But like with salt, if you're storing this in Mylar, you don't want to add an oxygen absorber because sugar can turn hard as well. Buying raw and unfiltered honey is another good way to have a long-term storage source of sugar, and it can be added to food or used medicinally for things like sore throats. But it's important to remember that storing large quantities of honey can get rather expensive. I was able to get each of these 10-pound bags of granulated sugar for around $6.12 each. And when it comes to storage, I found that the larger bags like these work very well for storing sugar. But one thing that a lot of people overlook when it comes to long-term food storage is dairy. And dairy, it is an important part of our diet and a good way to go about getting what you need is to store powdered milk. You can get powdered milk at the baking section of pretty much any grocery store, so it's pretty easy to find. And like a lot of other dry foods, it does have a pretty long shelf life. If you store it correctly in mylar with oxygen absorbers, then this stuff, it can last anywhere between 15 and 20 years. Like regular milk, you can use it either as an ingredient in something else that you're cooking or just as like a drink. But the big downside to powder milk, kind of like with other kinds of dried dairy, is that it can be pretty expensive compared to other kinds of just dried food storage. Like this four pound bag, it cost me $19.67 at my local grocery store, so of course it's not going to be as cheap, you know, per serving as some of this other stuff, but it's still an important thing to have in your diet. Another thing that you need to have in your diet is some sort of fat, and vegetable oil, it's a fairly inexpensive way to get this done. Like, I was able to get this one gallon jug of it for around $8.17, which isn't all that bad. And this is going to be kind of a supplement to other foods that you're already eating. Like, you can use this to help you prepare rice. And I know that there's a lot of y'all out there that are probably going to prefer a different kind of, like, uh, vegetable, maybe like canola oil or coconut oil, something like that to help you prepare that. But this is going to be a little bit cheaper than some of those options, so that's why I chose it for this particular video. Uh, vegetable oil is also going to be good for other things. Like if you can store more of it, of course you can use it for frying, you can use it for baking. So it's good, kind of a good just staple to have around. But kind of the big downside to it is, and it's the same thing for other kinds of different oils, is that they're not going to have an indefinite or multi-decade shelf life like the other foods that we've talked about in this video. This jug of vegetable oil that I just picked up today, it's probably going to be good until around November 22nd, 2024. So about a two-year shelf life. If I were to open it right now, it would probably be okay for around a year. Now all that's provided that you store it in a relatively cool place and you, of course, keep the lid on. And y'all, this isn't the only food that you are going to need to store. When storing large amounts of dried goods, then you're going to need to store even more water than you normally would because you're going to be using a lot of water to help you prepare this food. You're also going to need other things like canned meat, also canned fruits and canned vegetables because there's no way that your body's going to get everything that it needs just from the stuff on this table right now. This it's a good start. It's going to cover a lot of bases, and it's going to be something that you can build off of, but it should not be considered a, an end stopping point or your ultimate goal. Then even storing other kinds of grains like pasta or oats can give your diet some more variety, which is important from a nutritional standpoint. It can also help boost morale, and it also wouldn't be a bad idea to pick up some multivitamins to make sure that your body has everything that it needs 
even if your food is kind of a little bit short in certain areas. And if y'all want to see a more detailed list of long shelf life survival foods, then be sure to check out this video. I'll also put a card for my food storage playlist over here. And I'd once again like to thank Wallaby Goods for sponsoring this video. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.